Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Smita. Welcome to my channel. Let's get down to basics today. You may have the best makeup on, but when you take those pictures with flash, hmm, not so good. I'm going to divide my face. On one side, we'll do everything that you need to do to avoid flashback. And on the other side, we'll do everything to attract flashback. And we'll take a picture and I'll show you the difference so you can avoid flashbacks too. If you're ready, let's begin. But before we do anything to our face, let's go ahead and use a primer. I'm using this new one from Revlon. It's the Photo Ready Prime Plus. I'm just going to apply a thin layer all over my face and neck. Tip number one, if you have uneven skin tone or visible dark circles like me, first try to color correct. Please remember that most of the uneven skin tone that you see on your face has a blue undertone. So if you don't color correct and apply a foundation or concealer directly over that, it's going to mix with that undertone and give you that ashy look. So in this flash photography, the colors look quite different in areas where you haven't color corrected, giving you that flashback. Instead, if you color correct, just like I did on one side, it's going to cancel out that blue undertone. So it's going to even out your skin tone. So no matter what you apply over it, you're not going to get that ashy look or flashbacks. I'm going to very lightly set this with a loose powder before I apply the foundation to avoid it from mixing with the foundation. You'll find information on every product that I'm using in the description box right below this video. On the other side, we're not going to use any color corrector, but we will go with the foundation directly. That brings us to tip number two. Avoid foundations with an SPF. Yes, you heard me say it. I love foundations with SPF, but just for the daytime. Definitely not when there's flash photography because that is going to give you flashbacks. The foundation that I use every single day, L'Oreal Freshwear, has an SPF. So it has built-in sunscreen. I'm going to use it on the don't side. So let's go ahead and apply it. And just to clarify, some of the products that I'm using on the bad side are some of my favorite products that I use on a daily basis, but only during the daytime. If there's flash photography, I try to avoid them. On the good side, I'm going to be using this foundation from Amazing Cosmetics. This does not have a built-in SPF. Make sure to bring your foundation down to your neck as well because you want an even skin tone on your face and neck. Otherwise, with flash photography, your face is going to look different than your neck. Again, giving you flashbacks. As we all know, flash photographies are generally in the evenings and late in the evenings when the sun rays are not that harsh. So I would personally avoid foundations with a built-in SPF. But if you're a firm believer like me that you definitely need sunscreen, whether there's sun or no sun, you just have that habit of going out with a sunscreen, apply a light layer on your skin directly and then apply the foundation. Sometimes even that can give you flashbacks. So you have to really experiment with your skin and with different sunscreens to see if that helps. And always remember to use a foundation that is an exact match of your skin tone. If you go any lighter, again, with flash photography, your face is going to look ghostly and yeah, you're going to get those flashbacks. And that brings us to tip number three, use a concealer that is a good match to your skin tone don't go lighter. I'm going to demonstrate this with my favorite concealer, Milani. And on the good side, I'm going to be using my exact skin tone shade, which is 145. And on the bad side, I'm going to go lighter with the shade 135. Let's start with the bad side first. So I'm going to be using the lighter shade of concealer. So I'm going to be using it in the usual areas, mostly in the high points of my face and also to spot correct. Thank you. 
and on the good side i'm going to be using the shade 145 again applying it in the usual places and i'll blend it out with a damp sponge And before this starts to crease, I'm going to set my face with some powder. That brings us to tip number four. Avoid using powders that are absolutely white because white attracts light, giving you flashbacks. Instead, use powders with a bit of tint to it. With that, make sure you also avoid baking if you don't want flashbacks. Baking is a process where you leave the powder on your skin for a longer time just so it can mix with the foundation and concealer and give you that flawless look. It does give you a flawless look, but it can be very drying and can also give you flashbacks. So on the bad side, we are using the lighter powder. We'll just let it sit there because we want to show you how it looks when it bakes. Now for the good side, let's use the powder with a little bit of tint to it and we will not let it sit and bake. We will immediately blend it out. Most HD powders and loose powders have silica in it. It's not the same as silicone primers. Don't get confused with that. This is a completely different element. So silica is the one that causes the flashback because it has a little bit of shine to it. So basically we need loose powders to set our concealers otherwise it's going to crease so instead of using something that's absolutely white or a light color try to use something that has a tint that way it's not attracting too much light and will not give you those flashbacks now that we've let the powder sit and bake for some time let's go ahead and dust it out if you cannot find loose powders with a tint, you can also use pressed powders. But just remember, pressed powders can be a little bit more thicker. They can give you extra coverage, but at the same time, they can be very drying. You can kind of already see that on the bad side, it's already reflecting some light in areas where I use the concealer and the powder. And you can only imagine when I use flash what will happen. Now for tip number five. When you use dimension, when you apply contours or highlighters, try to keep it very subtle. Don't make it too harsh and make sure you blend really well. Let's start with the bad side. I'm going to start powder contouring and I'm going to keep it really strong. And on the good side, we will use the same contour powder, but we will just add enough that it can give us that dimension and depth, but it's not harsh. I'm also going to make sure that it's well blended into the other skin tone on my face. I'm using the Tati Beauty Blenderful. You can use a powder puff, blenderful brush, whatever you have. And I'm going to make sure everything is well blended and that way you still have that depth and dimension, but it's not harsh. The same thing goes with any color that you use on your face, whether it's a blush, highlighter, what have you. Make sure it's subtle and it's well blended into your skin. Now I'm going to finish up my brows, apply a lipstick and I'll be right back. If you would generally look at me like this in daylight, you might not find too much of a difference on both sides. But let's go ahead and take a picture with flash and see what happens. And here it is. You can clearly see the difference on both sides. One with everything that we shouldn't be doing that gave you a flashback and the other side which is the good side where we did everything right i hope you found this video helpful please let me know in the comment section below if you want to watch more videos like these and please don't forget to like share and subscribe if you enjoyed my video i post new videos every tuesdays thursdays and sundays and for your convenience i'm listing all the products that i used in the description box right below this video so make sure to check that out i also have a giveaway winner from last week and that is Riddhi Chopra. Congratulations. I will be contacting you shortly to get your giveaway to you. I love you guys so much and I will see you soon with a brand new one. Bye guys.